Are you ready for Valentine's Day? And your answer should probably be absolutely not. It's January, Megan. I am here to give you the easiest, easiest crochet amigurumi heart pattern. I am so jazzed up about this because I spent a while trying to figure out how to make it like super cute, but like super easy to understand. And I bet, I bet that you can make one of these no problem. So it came from this pattern, which I call um, a heartworm. I think they're so silly. So if you want me to show you exactly how I've made one of these guys, um, please let me know. I'm happy to show you. I think they're so silly and <laughs> I just think they're a silly concept. So I totally believe that you can do this. I'm gonna be showing you how to make this one, which is using size four yarn, um, but you can adapt the pattern and just literally size up your yarn this is sweet snuggles um, it's a jumbo yarn and i used an 11.5 millimeter hook for this one and then this one is a size 4 yarn and i only use a 3.0 millimeter hook for this one so you can take this pattern and use any yarn and hook combo you want with it and make a super fluffy plushy one or you can tone it down and make like a keychain version or make it even smaller using a size 3 yarn and let's say a 2.0 millimeter hook. It uses a couple of techniques um, which, you know, don't be scared. It uses like some different stuff which I hope I can introduce you to um, and I know you can do it. I know you can do it. So happy Valentine's Day. Happy early Valentine's Day. And um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let's start with our materials here. We need a 3.0 millimeter hook. I have size four yarn in like a lipstick pink color. I've got some scissors. I've got a yarn needle, um, a couple of stitch markers if you feel more comfortable with more, but I'm only gonna use like one <laughs> i only need one um and then you're gonna need a bunch of polyester fiber fill stuffing and that's it that's all we need we are gonna make a magic circle or a magic ring to start and to do that i'm gonna take the yarn and pinch it between my finger and my thumb and then i'm gonna wrap it around two fingers here and over top again okay so i'm gonna be holding this little x right here and then kind of just letting that fall then I'm gonna take my crochet hook and I'm gonna put it under that, that top or that front yarn that's going around both of my fingers here. And I'm gonna pick up the yarn that's coming from the yarn ball right there. Then I'm gonna take away my fingers here, still pinching this loop. And I'm gonna hold the yarn in the back with like my fingers over here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna yarn over with the ball of yarn. And then I'm gonna pull through that stitch that was on my hook, just that little loop. And now you'll have something like this in which you've got kind of like this, this little spiraling section and then you have like a nice big loop here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put six single crochets into this loop here. So you'll go into the loop yarn over or yarn under and make a single crochet so this is stitch number one so this is your first single crochet this is just that little chain stitch that we made that one doesn't count so we're gonna start from this one where you can see like those those V stitches so we're gonna continue crocheting the six single crochets into this loop and I'm just holding on to like the tail and the loop here and eventually I'll have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this short end and I'm just gonna pull it nice and tight. And that's gonna close off that little hole that we made. And it's gonna kind of look like a, like a U shape that we have now or V or kind of almost like a semicircle but not quite all the way. So 
this last single crochet is our last single crochet of the round here. And I like to mark my last stitch of the round. So I put on a stitch marker right there. I like these little clippy ones, but literally you can use whatever, even a bobby pin works, just something to, so you know where the end of your round is. Some people like to do the beginning of your round, so whatever your preference is. So I don't count the magic circle as a round. I start off with the first round being like my actual crocheting round. And the way that I think about this is like, I don't know if other people do this, but if you were to chain, like make a base chain, I wouldn't consider the chain the round one or row one. It would just be like a chain. And then once you start working back, that's round one or row one. But I think the same thing with the magic circle. Your magic circle is just like your base, but I don't know, just keep that in mind as you're going through my pattern. But so for round one, we're going to go into this stitch right here. You can see these two little V's right here. I guess it's not two V's, but you can see this little this little V or that braid right here. This is not a stitch. This is that chain. Remember that we did. You're not going to go into this little little lump right here. You're gonna go under both loops here. And to start, we are going to put an increase into that stitch. And an increase is just two single crochets. So I've done two single crochets into that one stitch. And we're gonna do that all the way around. So we have six stitches from our magic circle. So I'm gonna increase six times. So each time I put in two single crochets into each stitch. And then this is my last stitch here. Okay. Right. And I'm going to replace my stitch marker so I know where the end of my round is. So we have increased six stitches because we did an increase six times and therefore we have 12 stitches now. So if you want to go ahead and count them, you totally can. So for round two, we are going to start by single crocheting the first one and then we are going to increase in the next one. So two into one. So you now made like three stitches, if that makes sense. So one, two, three. And we're gonna do this combination of single crochet one and then increase six times around. So next stitch would be single crochet and then the next stitch would be increase. And then the next stitch would be single crochet and then the next stitch would be increase. And then the next stitch would be single crochet and then the next one would be increase. So we're doing that six times around total. And it would pretty much take you all the way back to your last stitch. So this is my last increase. I should end off with an increase after I've split my stitch. Okay, there we go. Finished off with an increase and we've increased in this round by six so 12 plus six will give us 18 stitches and you can go ahead and count those up okay so for round three and four so these are going to be the next two rounds we are just going to single crochet all the way around so you'll be single crocheting 18. so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve make sure you're getting under both loops 13 14 15 16 17 and the last one will be 18. So well, you'll have this starting to form. Now, you can see I don't have a tail coming from this side 
but I do have a tail coming from this side. So if your piece looks like this, all I want you to do is go like this. <laughs> That's it. Just literally flip it. And you can feel it starting to curve. So some people start going like this. And you can see that these stitches kind of look a little bit different. So all I want you to do is push that inwards and flip it. You know, like one of those little, I forget what they were called <laughs> when I was growing up, but they're like little rubber pieces and then you like flip them over and you stick them on the ground and then they pop up. You're gonna essentially just like flip them like that. Does that make sense? Okay, uh, that was a weird analogy. <laughs> so that was round one, two, three. That was our third round. You can also count how many rounds you've done based on how many like sections there are here. So you can see that this is our magic circle that we did. And then this is round one, round two, and round three. That's how I count it, at least. Okay, so for round four, like I said, we are just going to single crochet around. So I'm gonna go quickly through here. I'm not gonna count them, but you should have 18 stitches. We haven't increased, we haven't decreased. They'll be the same as last time for round four. Okay, one more stitch here. There we go. So now you don't have to put your stitch marker back on. What we're gonna do is we are gonna pull up a loop, just kind of like that, and take out your crochet hook. And then I'm gonna get you to actually cut it. And you can cut it with like a little bit, maybe about that much. Um, if you're using chunkier yarn, you might need a little bit more, but just a little bit, just enough for sewing in later. And we'll, we'll get to that part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little bump and we are gonna forget about it for now. We're gonna put that off to the side. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we are gonna start off with our magic circle. I'm gonna go nice and slow. I'm gonna start off with our magic circle. Okay. And we're gonna put six single crochets in here so we're gonna do like essentially an exact replica of what we just did i will still go through it with you one two three four five six there we go and then we're gonna pull that nice and tight and then we are going to increase times six so remember to put your stitch marker on the last stitch if you're choosing to do it that way. And we're gonna increase starting in this stitch right here. We're gonna put two single crochets into that stitch to indicate an increase. And then the next stitch over, we're gonna increase. And the next stitch over, we're gonna increase. Next stitch over, we're gonna increase. We'll do that six times. And if you've done it, more than six times then you probably had too many stitches in your magic loop or you've gone into that first chain that's not technically a stitch so we want to have 12 stitches at the end so if you need a pause and meet up with me that's totally fine take 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 it this at your own pace and then give it a count to make sure you've got the right number of stitches for the next round round two we are going to single crochet and then increase. And we are gonna do that combination all the way around. So six times. So this is my second time. Single crochet, increase. Single crochet, and then increase. Okay. So we're gonna do this all the way around. single crochet and increase there we go okay so that was just round two and round three and four are just going to be single crocheting 18 all the way around 
So I am going to skip ahead and I will meet you back once I've done the two rounds of 18 single crochets and uh, we'll come back together. Okay, so I've just finished up my two rounds of single crocheting 18 and this is what I've got and it should directly match what we just did. We're not gonna cut this one though. We're gonna continue crocheting from this one and attaching this one. So this sounds a little bit complicated, but I promise you it's not, it'll be a-okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll get it, I promise. So you're gonna take your one that you've already finished, the one that's cut from the, the yarn skein, and you're gonna take uh, the, the one that's still attached to the yarn in your right hand, left hand is going to be the first one that we made, the one that's cut. So find the yarn that's cut and kind of pull it up so you can see which stitch you've gone into. So this was the last stitch of our round when we were crocheting it. You can see like, we, you can kind of see a, the top half of the V, but you can see that there's a stitch in it right here. We're gonna just go a little bit to the left and you see how there's like an empty one. This is the one that we would have gone into if we were to keep crocheting. So pull that up, see where your, your last stitch was and then make a little mark and be like, okay, that's the next stitch over. This V we are going to go into. So take your hook and literally just right in there. Okay, that's, that's it. Now you're gonna take the yarn that's coming from the ball of yarn and we're gonna like essentially just crochet like this is the start of our round because it's gonna be now. So take this cut yarn and throw it like behind you somewhere like just push it off to the side and take the yarn that's coming from the ball of yarn and hold it in your hand as if you're crocheting with it okay so you've got that that um the hook into the first stitch and we are going to single crochet right there so it should look a little something like that so i'm gonna kind of back out so you can see what i've done again so you're gonna go into the next stitch yarn over or under your hook and pull up the loop yarn over and pull through two so just a single crochet just kind of like just like that it should look a little bit wonky at first that's totally fine now we're gonna go into the next one and we're gonna single crochet and we're gonna single crochet 15 times including that first stitch that you uh attached onto the the old bump bump is that what i'm gonna call it into the old bump <laughs> so you can see we've got three stitches here that we've already done one two three or you can count the top v's from so this this one has the stitch marker in it so that's our last stitch and you can see there's a v one there's a v two there's a v three so we've done three and we're gonna do 15 so three four five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and last one, 15. And you're like, what the heck, Megan? There's three more to do here. There's three more Vs. That's perfect. We wanna stop here. So don't finish all the way up to the end where you would have left off on your first bump. Don't finish it. Leave the three V's left. We don't want to touch these. Leave them. Don't touch them. <laughs> they just stay there, okay? So you should have one, two, three V's left over because you've already gone into this one. There would be one, two, three. Okay? Here's where it gets a little bit complicated. You're going to ignore those last three stitches and then you're gonna ignore three stitches on this side, okay? So you can see our little stitch marker is, that's the last stitch, right? You're gonna go to the bump, that second bump that you did. And you're gonna kind of pull these two bumps apart and you're gonna, you're gonna see where your stitches are, which ones are occupied, which ones are empty. So you can see the stitch marker right on here and it's going into this stitch here this one's already full right this one's this one's taken up we don't we don't want to go into that one that one's already done 
we're going to go over three more stitches. So this one's done. There's one stitch, one V, two, three. So we're gonna leave these three stitches empty. One, two, three. And we're gonna go into this stitch. If it's helpful for you, you can add stitch markers to like prevent yourself from working in them. Here's an example. You know, we'll just leave that there. I'm gonna put a stitch marker here. That's one stitch. That's two stitch. And then this one would be three stitches. Okay, we don't wanna work in any of those. So I'm gonna put my <laughs> crochet hook back on. We don't wanna finish these ones. Remember, we're going over to the other bump. I can, you can see one, two, three stitches are taken up by these stitch markers. We're gonna go into the fourth one. So put those kind of down there and go into this one because this one's already taken up by the purple. We're gonna go into this one. And you're just gonna single crochet. And you're like, Megan, there's a gaping hole between these. Just don't, don't think about it, okay? <laughs> So now I'm going to take these out because I've marked kind of where I need to go and I'm already attached to the other bump. Don't take out your first or the one that's marking your last stitch though, okay? Just leave that one there. And you're going to go all the way back to your stitch marker. This should be 15 stitches including the one that we just did. So one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and the last stitch would be 15. Okay, so you've attached the two bumps together and there is a big hole in between them and that's fine. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the yarn that's like hanging from this original bump. We're gonna just pull it onto the outside of the piece and then there should be some pieces of yarn from the magic circles that we've made on either side. So we're gonna just tuck those in to the bumps to get them out of the way. And then this one's just gonna hang out for a little bit. We're not gonna touch it. We're not gonna do anything with it. Try not to wrap it within your piece as you're crocheting. That round that we just did to connect these two bumps is round five. And round five now has made 30 stitches. And this makes sense because we had 18 stitches over here on one side, 18 stitches over here on the other side. So adding 18 and 18 would give you 36. However, we skipped three stitches on this side and we skipped three stitches on this side. So six stitches total. So 36 minus six will give you 30. So we should have 30 at the end of round five. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to round six and round six is gonna be a decrease round. But let's first get started by doing our first stitch. So this can kind of be a little bit complicated because you might not know where to go, but I want you to just kind of pull these apart and you should see that there is a V right here, okay? So it kind of looks a little bit weird, like this is our last stitch that we went into. And we're gonna go just over that, okay? And that will be our first stitch. So to start off round six, we are going to single crochet three. And then we're gonna do what's called an invisible decrease. To do the invisible decrease, we are gonna pick up the front loop only of the next two stitches. Should look like that. So these are our front loops of the next two stitches. And then the back loop is kind of just like these little horizontal bars just off of the hook okay so i'll show you again so i'm just gonna stretch them out so you see our v's right these two next two stitches are right here there are there's like this back loop of the v and there's the front loop of the v we're gonna take the front loops only of the next two stitches and we're gonna pull up a loop 
and then pull through both and that's gonna be our invisible decrease okay it's just like a decrease we're just putting two stitches together but it's just a little bit more invisible so you don't have all the stuffing poking through so we just did three and then we attach two together so that's like four stitches total we're gonna do that again single crochet three and then we're gonna invisible decrease. And we're gonna do the single crochet three invisible decrease combination six times around, and it should take us all the way back to the beginning again. So, one, two, three, and then we're gonna invisible decrease. Okay, this one's a little bit wonky too because it's our connection piece but just pull it apart, look for the V like you normally would, turn it down and you can see there's like a nice big hole to go right through, okay? One, two, three, invisible decrease. One, two, three, invisible decrease. Oh, I split this stitch. Just gonna back up and do that again. So this is our invisible decrease. One, two, three. And our last invisible decrease will encompass that last stitch, right? The stitch before the last stitch and the last stitch. So you're gonna take off your little stitch marker and you're gonna crochet the second last stitch and the last stitch together with an invisible decrease. So we had 30 stitches and now we've decreased by six. So we have 24 stitches left. So you can go ahead and pause here and give it a count. For round seven, we have 24 stitches left and we are gonna single crochet around. And this means we're gonna single crochet 24 stitches. So I'm just gonna single crochet all the, all the way around back to my stitch marker. So I am just gonna whip ahead. You can pause here and I'll meet you back at the beginning once I've done my 24 stitches. Okay, so I just finished up with round seven doing single crochet around. 24 stitches um, and now we're going to move on to round eight and round eight is going to be a decrease row again except we're going to do it a little bit different of a combination so we are going to single crochet two and then we're going to invisible decrease so remember pick up the front loops of the next two stitches Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. Okay, so single crochet two, invisible decrease. Single crochet two, and then invisible decrease. And we're gonna do this combination of single crochet two and invisible decrease six times around in total, and it should take us all the way back to our stitch marker here. One, two, and then invisible decrease. One, two, and invisible decrease. One, two, and invisible decrease. There we go. Okay, so you should have something like that. <laughs> and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a little, a little breather from crocheting. We're gonna kinda just pull up this loop so we don't lose all of our stitches. Give yourself some slack here. So this is the yarn that's coming from our ball of yarn. We are gonna now work up, work on closing this little section up, okay? So to do that, we need a little yarn needle or tapestry needle or something. And we're gonna thread that through and we're gonna try and open this up so we can kind of see what's going on. So this one is coming from the, the end of this bump that we made. 
I am going to try and sew this together. And I kind of do this willy-nilly. <laughs> I don't really have a plan. I kind of just go back and forth. So I'm gonna pull it as if I'm trying to like see how good it looks closed. So it kind of looks good over here, right? Cause there's a gap right here. So if I pull it this way, it kind of closes that gap rather than if I were to go this way, there's still a gap there. So I'm gonna pull it down and I have chosen this little stitch to be where I attach it to. So I'm just gonna go through that way and pull, okay? Now I'm gonna take these Vs and sew them together. So these are the ones that we would have crocheted into, right? So I'm gonna go under both loops and pull up my yarn through there. And then I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna find the stitch there. So you can see there's a loop there and a loop there. We're gonna go under both and go down and up. Try not to split the stitch like I just did. You wanna capture both of those front loop and back loops. We're gonna go back to the other side, go under both, go back to the other side, go under both, other side, under both, other side, under both. And then like we've we've kind of sewn together all of our stitches here, but there's still this gap. And again, I just kind of see where where the yarn wants to go to close that gap. And it seems like it wants to go here. And now I want to tie it together. So as long as I'm happy with with everything here, which I kind of am, but there's like this little piece over here that I don't like. So I'm gonna work my way back to the other side again, kind of going through the stitches, just weaving my way back. See, I've made another hole here. So I'm just gonna kind of close it up until I'm like happy with it. And I'm just gonna weave back, weave back down here and I'm gonna fix this area here. I'm literally just like splitting the stitches however they wanna like go. <laughs> I'm just going back and forth and trying to like close any gaps that I see. So I'm pretty happy with this now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of pick a stitch that's next door to it and go under a little loop. And so that I have this little loop here put my yarn needle down through and kind of pull that into a little knot. And then we're gonna just kind of go down the same area that we came out from and pull that knot down into the piece. So it kind of disappears a little bit there. Now we can take our yarn needle off and I'm just gonna tuck, tuck the yarn tails away. So we still have our yarn that's coming from our ball of yarn. And then we have all of the rest of the pieces of yarns tucked, tucked nice into the heart. So I'm gonna pick up my yarn again and we're gonna continue crocheting. So let me put my stitch marker back on here. So we just finished a decrease round. So we finished round eight, which was single crochet two and then decrease. Now we're gonna move on to round nine, which is just single crocheting around. So I'm just gonna go all the way around. We should have 18 stitches because we decreased by six last time. So we should have 18 stitches on this round. I'm like splitting my stitches left, right, and center here. See, look at that split stitch. So just single crocheting all the way around back to my stitch marker. And 
last stitch here, the 18th stitch, and then we're gonna put our stitch marker back. Okay, so it's starting to come together. So round 10 is going to be a decrease row, and we are going to single crochet and then invisible decrease. And that is going to be our combination. Okay, so single crochet, and then invisible decrease the next two stitches together. Single crochet, invisible decrease. And we're going to do this six times around and all the way back to our stitch marker. And then our last two stitches will be the decrease. Invisible decrease, I should say. Okay. So now we should have 12 stitches total. So you can give that a count. Go ahead. And now for round 11, we are just going to single crochet around. So single crochet 12 stitches all the way back to your stitch marker. So if you need to pause here, because I'm crocheting a little bit faster, that's totally fine. I'm not gonna pause and meet you back up just because it's a small round. Okay, last stitch here. Okay, now we're gonna take another little break. This is a good sp spot to stop because we have a hole that's getting smaller so we're gonna have to stuff this now so grab your stuffing and we are going to just stuff the two sides of the heart nice and firmly so try and do it like evenly on both sides but I use a ton of stuffing because I like everything to keep its shape so I just kind of push with both of my fingers the stuffing into either side just so the the top of the heart is nice and filled out so we don't have to fill out all the way because we still have like a round or two to go but we are almost there so we're gonna do a nice job stuffing so give it a little squish give it a little mush around and then put your crochet hook back and make sure you put your stitch marker back on here as well. So for round 12, we are going to invisible decrease every single time. We're going to invisible decrease six times. So one, two, three. So remember, we're only picking up the front loops only. to move your stitch marker out of the way sometimes or five and the last one will be the last two stitches six and you should have six stitches remaining okay so if you want to give them a count it's totally fine go ahead and count them and we are going to trim this yarn tail just like that you really do not need too much to end this off but before we finish we are going to stuff a little bit extra so grab a little bit more stuffing i like to take the back of my crochet hook and kind of push it in there so i hold up the yarn with like my finger here to open up the hole a little bit and yes, I am going to push all of this stuffing into <laughs> the small hole that we have. So I just keep on pinching and pushing and pinching and pushing all of that in. Okay. And try and get all of those pieces in there. Try not to have too much fluff sticking out. There we go. Okay. We are almost done. Literally the home stretch. So now grab your yarn needle and thread it. There you go. And now we have six stitches remaining. So we're going to close up this hole by finding the front loops only of the remaining six stitches. So pull this up and see where your last decrease was. So this one's 
pulled up, right? So this isn't a stitch. We've already decreased that. So we're going to go into the next one over, which is right here. Okay, so if we were single crocheting, we would just go under both of these loops, but we're going to pick up the front loop only of that stitch and pull through. Okay, now we're going to move on. I like to hold my yarn like this and we're going to go to the next one. So you can see if I went like through this hole here, I could pull up both loops, but you can kind of see that like these front loops are kind of hiding the back loop because it's just such a small area. So you're going to find that one loop, try not to grab any extra stuffing, pull it out to make sure it's only one piece of yarn and pull through and put it to the back. Find the one piece here, pull through, the one piece here, pull through, the one piece here, pull through, and the last one right here, and pull through. So you can see that we have grabbed all of the six stitches remaining, the front loops, and we're just gonna give it a little bit of a tug to make it into a nice close. And then we're gonna take our yarn needle and go through that hole that we just made. And we're gonna push all the way up, okay? So it kind of looks like this, and then if you were to pull it even more, it like sucks back in. So try not to pull it too much. If you pull it too much, that's totally okay. You can kind of just mush it back out. Just give it a mush. So all we have to do now is cut this yarn. That's it. Literally, that's it. Done. Hope you guys like the pattern. Um, hopefully it was easy enough. I always appreciate your feedback. So if you found it a little bit difficult in a section or something, just let me know. Um, I do try and improve every single time. So um, your feedback's always welcomed. So hopefully you guys liked it. And now you are ready for Valentine's Day. And of course, let me know if you guys wanna see the heartworm pattern. I. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's so silly. Like, look at him, he's just like a little worm, but it's a heartworm, and it's like a terrible, terrible disease in animals, but like, come on, come on. So anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.